Yo, Max B lived a crazy life. <laughs> and did Chrissy really touch it in Miami? Chrissy touched it in Miami. Chrissy, Chrissy, Jim Jones' wife. It's she stuck my head under her shirt and did like this. Wow. I got money now, I got power. Keys, I own this building. I own the landlord. Let's go. Richie. <laughs> We're going to be remembered the biggest. We're going to be talked about the most 50 years from now. Open it. Where's your pup? I'm your father. Shout out to Millie Vanilli, man. Jimmy don't come to Harlem. He don't shoot no DVD. Get me right here. Chrissy spit on my head. She touched it in my ear, me. Before we walk the plank, we going up and then stab. I'd rather go do 30 years than I have your face. <laughs> if they told me your max do 50 years or take hell, hell no nah face, I'd do the 50 years. Get the f out of my crib, bitch. Cause you was bad. You was a bad girl. Literally. Literally. Yo, literally. 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 She's pushing it when you hear me. We gotta get into this life of the Silver Surfer, the Boss Dawn, the Bigger Vel, Max B, the Wave Master. His real name is Charlie Wingate, but in the hood back in Harlem, they used to call him Charlie Rambo for whatever reason, but we about to get into what the reason may have been in a few minutes. His mother had drug issues and his pops wasn't around. So he was primarily raised by his grandparents. So it, it was just a lot of ups and downs for this dude. Max was running around crazy. In fact, when he was just 17 years old, he caught an eight year sentence. He did an eight year bid for robbery. And that'll come back to bite him in his ass a little later because he will continue to do the same thing. And while he's doing this bid, he didn't he didn't do no music before he did that little eight year bid at 17. That's when he started getting into music. That's when he started writing. You know what I'm saying? So he comes home, and soon after he links up with Jim Jones. You know what I'm saying? They start going to Jim Jones' brother house, start to do recordings and things like that. And while he's getting right, you know what I'm saying, getting into music, the dude goes back for another 10 months. He goes back in there for another 10 months for pissing on the curb or something. You know what I'm saying? Like I said before, in the beginning, yo, this dude, was, he, he was bugged out. But Max B promised himself. He said, yo, after this, and when I get out of doing this little 10 months, I'm just, I'm focusing on music. I'm going hard with the music. And while he was actually doing them 10 months, that's when he came up with the Big Avell name. Max Big Avell, the legendary <laughs> nickname, man. What the fuck? I'm gonna change my name to. So we start talking about prison. And he said Cag Sacky was a Max A or Max B. I said, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I said, go back, go back. I said, what? He said, Max B. Mm -hmm. He said, Max B. I said, Max B. I said, that's it. That, that's the one. He said, what you mean, that's it? I said, no, listen to that shit. Look what you just said. Look how you said it. Mm -hmm. Max B. He said, Max B, I like that. I said, all right, call me Max B from now on. 2005, he signs a deal. It's like a six-figure advance or something like that. So things is looking up for him. 2006 was a good year for him as well. He links up with Jim Jones, you know what I mean? Things is moving. He even uh, linked up with Cam. He got on that Cam and went at Jay-Z with Cam. He was on that hook. Uh, you you gotta hate it or you gotta love it uh, from Cameron's Killer Season album. Now, around this same time is when Max would get, he, he would get caught up again now and some robbery stuff. 2006, he'll get caught up in a botched robbery that allegedly happened out in New Jersey. I ain't gonna get into too much of what happened. It was a robbery that went wrong. Somebody lost their life. Max B gets locked up, so that's what happened. Now, while Max B is locked up, Jim Jones is on the rise. You know what I'm saying? That's where they beef, that's where they problems start happening. Max B's locked up watching Jim Jones just take off with Max B's music. Max B wrote a lot of the stuff that Jim Jones was performing and getting rich off of. Not just Max B, 
but also stack bundles too. And that was the Hustlers Poem album. The Jim Jones that, that came out in that was the one that, you know what I mean, a lot of writing came from Max and Stax. I don't want to be friends, I don't care about no negotiation, because I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Fuck a negotiation, fuck Jim. You know, they, they were saying that you was tied in for 10 hours, is that, like, you want to stand that up? Jim got all his music. Okay. <laughs> I, tell you, I wrote 10 albums for that nigga, he got him in his drive already. I don't owe nothing. Niggas got his, he got all his songs already. How you think he got so hot? Came out with all them tapes. I did that. I put them hooks together. But you, you know, like, like for the from the fans' point of view, y'all made some incredible music. Together. I made incredible music. All he did was rhyme sixteen. Well, you know, <laughs> I made incredible. I made the hooks. I made the melodies. Yeah. I made the shit, dog. I'm the man. He just was a part of it. When when them publishing checks break down and the, and, and the hook is 35 percent and the rest goes the other 50 percent go to the producer and the rest of that shit go to the niggas that's on it. The mother niggas don't mean nothing. The nigga on the hook you hear three four times on the song. That's the nigga. The niggas have me locked up like I only do hooks. I'm a nice nigga all around, dog. I write songs. I write R&B. I write everything, nigga. I just live better than you, nigga. I'm the best, nigga. You niggas sitting around in the gym. Nigga, you niggas up under there, fake groupie niggas, like y'all writing records and y'all niggas just sitting around watching that nigga look good. Ain't none of y'all niggas out there making nothing happen, man. Boss Don Bigavell, man. It's my season, man. Fuck with your boy, man. Max comes home after doing those 10 months, and him and Jim Jones, they not really seeing eye to eye. And the biggest reason was Max wasn't getting paid. Max said, yo. I'm, I'm I'm around this dude. He doing these thousand these thousands of dollars shows and giving me giving me a hundred three hundred dollars. Like you know what I'm saying? And and you writing the and he's writing the music. So I can understand why Max was upset about that. You know what I mean? I would be too. Ain't nobody playing with their bread, especially if you writing people and you putting them on and you making sure they he Jim Jones skyrocketing and all that. And Max be all broke. You could be breaking me off three hundred dollars. Like come on. So. And around 2008, Max said, you know what I mean, forget this, I'm out of here, I'm not with Bird Gang no more. Bird Gang was Jim Jones' squad, his little, that's his label, I don't, I don't really know. But that's what that's what he put Max B on to. Max B was like, I'm out of here, I'm not with this no more, I need to go make my own money. I'm not about to be sitting around writing music for you, Jim Jones, and doing shows and getting paid $300. What the fuck are you going to work at McDonald's? Who, who's doing that? Not, not Max. <laughs> Once Max left Bird Gang, it was on. Max B started bombing on Bird Gang. This is when I really, really got into Max B, is when he left Bird Gang. Bird Gang was like my getting my feet wet into his music. But once he left them, I feel like he just started flourishing. That dude went, he took the hell off, man. He took off out of here. And he started bombing on Bird Gang and Dipset. Cam and them, he started getting, he, he was going to everybody, hell round. Everybody could get it. He was on the ball. So Max B starts his own his own little squad, you know what I mean? Gang Green. And he start flooding the streets with mixtapes. Start I'm talking every other month, this dude's dropping an album. Mixtape. Album. Them shits was albums. They had, you know what I mean, a, a nice... They wasn't like little EPs with five songs. These was full-blown 12, 20-something tracks. You know what I'm saying? Y'all remember when... Him and French was tearing up the streets with the Coke Wave, Public Domain, Vigilante Season, Domain Diego. I could go on for years. This dude, Max B, has, has so many projects. His, his work ethic is just crazy. So Max B starts his own thing, Gang Green. He does a deal with um, Amalgam Digital. He gets with Amalgam Digital, but he's being prevented from releasing an album from Jim Jones' legal team because he's still under contract with Jim Jones. So Jim Jones like, nah, you, you ain't about to eat out here, man. You ain't about to eat out here. Black ball. So Max, Max was stuck. He was being, he, he was stuck. He was stuck as a mixtape rapper. He couldn't drop an album because of that, that that mm -hmm. contract with Jim Jones. Jim Jones is preventing him. Now Max B ended up linking up with French Montana. You know what I'm saying? At first, Max wasn't messing with French because of the, uh, Max's relationship with Jim Jones. But once um, Max and Jim Jones had that falling out, Max linked up with French. Um, and they, you know what I mean? They hit it off. Like, they, they the chemistry was crazy, I guess. Pause. French didn't like Jim Jones because Jim Jones, uh, French, well, this is what French said. French said he he seen a video, right? He seen a video of Jim Jones like clowning French Montana's near-death experience. Y'all know French Montana got, you know, knocked in the head 
before, you know, way back in the day. And Jim Jones is making fun of that, so that's how Jim Jones and French Montana, I guess that's how they little squabble happened. And that helped French's career, linking up with Max B. Even French said it. French said, when I linked up with Max, you know what I mean? That that was a real good look for me because Max was the hottest in the city at the time. Mind you, French Montana, he wasn't always a rapper. He used to be a DVD dude, like smacking them. He, he had his little Cocaine City DVD. I don't know if y'all remember that. Coke wave, you know what I mean? French and Max, they getting right. This is the Chrissy part, right? Max B claimed that Jim Jones' wife Chrissy, Chrissy Lumpkin, I believe her last name is, Jim Jones' wife, touched it, touched it in Miami. You know what I'm saying? Supposedly, it was a show, a trip out to Miami, Chrissy had came too. Now, it wasn't just Max B and Jim Jones and Chrissy. It was, you know, it was the Bird Gang. It, it was a business trip. They went out there for shows in Miami, you know what I'm saying? And Chrissy came too. And supposedly, Max B said, Chrissy touched it. He said they, it was in the hotel room. Jim, nobody was dead. And Chrissy was just, you know what I mean? Like, on them, like, yo, I want you. Like, I like your, you know, I like your swag better than his, blah, blah, blah. But you know who? Chrissy, don't sell with you and Chrissy, man. <laughs> what about, that about the fake teeth and shit? <laughs> What's that about, man? It is what it is, man. You know, she was fucking with them boys back in, um, Lincoln back in the day. She used to fuck with the kid daddy. You know, God bless the dead daddy. He was a real big nigga out here. Oh, he got, he got, you know, killed and shit back in the day. She went on, stole the nigga money out of her, man, you know. He just kicked the bitch teeth out, man. All that shit fake. <laughs> True story, man. True story, man. She, I, I know that I'm from Lennox, man. She from yeah. Lennox Terrace, so she right down the block from me, like. Right, right. So you know, all this shit is like, you know, I don't, I ain't out here. I'm a real nigga, man. I keep it tall, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, the bitch need to fix it, then. Bitch, to fix it, then. <laughs> Soak them shits in some bleach. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. Get it real way before. You know? That's his joint, so you know, she gotta be on camera. You know? So when Max is coming home, like, please let us know. When is Max be coming home? Her French got Kim Kardashian involved. You know, Kim Kardashian's a lawyer or got, you know, prison reform or whatever. The good news is Max got his sentence reduced from 75 years to 12 years. So it's looking up for him. He could be coming home soon. We're we going we gonna to stay on the lookout for that. You know what I'm saying? But that's the crazy life of Max B, man. We got to keep Max B alive, man. I don't know what he's going to do once he finally do come home, but it looks like he's recording in the jail. You know what I'm saying? He's keeping the music up. French Montana keeps dropping uh, mixtapes and having songs with him him on it. You know, he's recording from jail, so he still has that, that passion for music. So let's never forget the wave, guys. The, you know what I mean? The Wavius, the Silver Surfer, the Max Biggervell, man. He's one, he, he got like timeless music. I feel like if he would have never went down, Max B would have been a problem today. Max B would have been a problem if he had his own label because he was on the internet thing. Good. He was on the independent wave crazy back in the day when people ain't really know how to be independent like that. It was all about getting signed. Dude, Max B is a real intelligent man, yo. He's a real intelligent man. These days, he say him and Jim Jones ain't beefing no more. Said they put it behind. He says he put it behind him. He says he chalks it up to just egos and being young back in the day. What up? Uh, French Montana and Jim Jones also squashed their beef. You know what I'm saying? I like to end these stories on a positive note. You feel me? It's your boy Z6 Stylish. This is some thoughts I had today. Black Rose TV. We out here.